We're back for Caravan of Garbage. We're doing all the Fantastic Four movies. The last week we did, what was it? Fantastic Four 94. Not good. Not good at all, no. But it's there if you want to see but it. But here we are for a big number two. That's right. Fox have jumped on board. They were very much like, hey, we've been doing the X-Men. Hey, Spider-Man's a big hit at the moment. Hey, some of the blades are okay. <laughs> Let's do the same for the Fantastic Four. And I'll say this. I think there's some good ideas here. I like the cast, mm -hmm. but I don't. This fucking sucks. <laughs> it's not, not, good. It's not good. I haven't seen it since. It's not good. This movie's so bad that it made me like the second one a little bit. So, you know what it does? Mm -hmm. And I feel like you had the same problem for the first Spider-Man. It feels like a blank, fake stage universe. Yes. You know, all the sets and all, even the street stuff, it just doesn't feel like anything is real. Also, leave a like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? I do know what you mean. Like, if like if one of the characters is being harassed on the street by a crowd of onlookers, they all very clearly say, hey, it's you, it's the invisible woman. Turn invisible for us. My friend likes you. Can I get a photo? Like, as she's running away, you know? They're just... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm here to say my line and then leave. Yeah. What do you think about this, though? Sometimes I love a retcon in a movie, and I think this is one of the best that we've ever seen. Go ahead. Reed Richards. Yes. Grey Temples. It's from the weird space. It's laser, from the space laser laser. Fog or whatever. That's right. He didn't have Grey Temples before the space event situation disaster. So what do you think about uh, Chris Evans in this? It's a little bit of a contrast because we've seen him as Captain America yes. for so many years. So this is, you know, him in full asshole mode. Yeah. People didn't the really... poor man's Paul Walker. Yeah, people didn't... I wouldn't even say poor man's, but they didn't really take him seriously until, like, your snow pierces and your sunshine, which mm. is terrific. Because I know there were some people upset, and he was reluctant to take on Captain America. Because he's like, I did one of these, and it wasn't... You yeah, guys right, 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 oh, right. Oh, my God. It's so amazing to me that they didn't give him frosted tips. It is spellbinding. <laughs> you know what I think happened is they did give him frosted tips. They worked out very badly they had to shave his hair. <laughs> you might That's be why right, he's right. got the crew cut. <laughs> so in this one, Reed Richards has to go, like, hat in hand to Victor Von Doom to get the money. Yes. To borrow... Victor Von Doom space station so they can perform these space experiments and Victor Von Doom is he's got all he's holding all the chips because he's got all the money and all the space stations and he's got Reed's ex-girlfriend boy does he mm. yeah because he didn't understand relationships or something I don't know it's one of those relationships where if they had one conversation about it they'd probably still be together like it right. doesn't feel <laughs> genuine yeah it's like why don't you understand me and he's like well I only understand science and logic <laughs> right <laughs> but there's no logic in love and kisses Reed and he's like well uh, oh you're always it's trying to stretch yourself, Reed. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's a good movie. That's true. <laughs> the thing suits okay. And it's I think good, it's yeah. uh, Michael Chiklis is the thing. It's perfect. He's the best He's the best thing we've seen. So he apparently was the only one of the cast who was a big fan of the comics and he really pushed for a non-computer generated character. So he wore this 60 pound latex suit that took him three hours to get in. I bet he regretted that. 30 seconds in putting the suit on. He's like, well, I'm a big fan and I think we've got to do just to this character, so I'm going to put the full prosthetics on. Oh, no, they're on and I hate this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I regret it. They've made the suit now. I can't back out. <laughs> but they couldn't have done a good version of this no. CGI then, I feel. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, because if you look at, like, Ang Lee's Hulk. But I guess rocks kind of were easier to, to do than human skin, so maybe it would have looked all right. So if we're going to talk about Sue Storm, I feel like we've got to talk about the action scene. So the two that are maybe in this. Okay. So the first one where everybody claps at the end because the Fantastic Four have saved the day. They caused every single event yes. that happens in that that resulted in, I'd imagine, a lot of deaths because there is a massive car pile There's up. There's a pile the up. There's yeah. a pile up that is primarily caused by the thing crashing into the middle of a of a freeway on a bridge. I thought that truck driver was dead. Mm. When you open the door, he's like, are you all right? I'm like, is this a different truck? <laughs> I guess I didn't is this the earliest appearance of the superhero hip and shouldering a truck and it either crumples or it flips? I think Hellboy did, a, did one uh, did a punch earlier. Right, maybe. okay. Yeah. That, that's probably but it, This yeah. is a big comic book trope that we love. I think Smallville even did it with a bus. That's true. But that is know, absolutely true. I don't true, know when yeah. that happened. But I know what you're referring to because obviously <laughs> the thing gets to the disaster area first because obviously he's ground zero because he caused it. <laughs> but then the other three have to get to that area to you know save the day, obviously. But the, th the remaining three of the Fantastic Four, they can't get through because there's so many police there's, and cars. There's 19 people in the way. There's no way to get through. But you know who could get through? A naked, invisible woman. <laughs> because in this version, she can't turn her clothes invisible. So it's the only way to, to, for her to properly be invisible is, is take all her clothes off. Yes. Obviously that's the, and then she runs through the crowd and then she becomes visible again and puts her clothes back on. And then, like, five seconds later, the other two show up and they're like, well, we also made it through the crowd. <laughs> Not using our powers or, or anything, really. We just walked through. Was this just an excuse to show Jessica Alba in underpants? 
I don't know. Well, actually, tough to say. <laughs> well, yeah, because once Jessica Alba was cast, they added that scene. Great stuff. So yes, in answer to that question, yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. You know what else was good? That he was brooding, of course, because his fiance, who he'd, he'd, he'd given an engagement ring to, yeah. discovered that he was a had become a horrible orange rock monster and ran away from him. And then afterwards, once he saves the day on the bridge, she goes to that bridge, mm. sees that he's saved the day and everybody's cheering and clapping, takes her engagement ring off and puts it on the ground <laughs> and leaves. <laughs> like she went there specifically yeah. to, in to, public. in public to end their relationship. <laughs> For good. At his lowest point. Maybe she just wanted to get a good look at him in the daylight. Oh, and just make sure. Yeah. Mm, maybe I could learn to love that weird orange guy. No, I'd have to go. I'd have to go to brunch with him. Yeah, <laughs> so no, nope. he'd be breaking all those glasses all the time with his giant rock hands. That's right. Okay, Doctor Doom. Yes, uh, I don't. Like, so in this version, I don't like so there's been this. many cinematic versions. Good casting. Of Doctor, I'll say Australia's own Julian. Yeah, McMahon. I like that. Son, Son of, of a, a prime, prime minister. minister. Yeah, that's the thing we know, and that other people know, <laughs> and will tell us unless we tell them first. So guess what? We told you first. Also, Stan Lee's in this. We know <laughs> he's the mailman or something. <laughs> Is he Willie Lumpkin? I don't know. That's the name of a Marvel mailman. I'm telling you the name. I, I think he is, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, Willie. So there's been many versions of Doctor Doom in these movies, and I feel like it's not that difficult to just do the comic book version yeah. where he's injured his face in an accident and then he went away for a long time. He didn't he go put, to space. No, and then he just, you know, built a suit of armor, became the ruler of Latveria, what, et cetera. Yeah, he's got a little bit of magic and a little little bit of sorcery and, a, and he's got a lot of technology stuff. But. Right, just do that, but nobody ever wants to do that. He's no. always a weird mutant man <laughs> or a... In this case, his skin is becoming metal or he's something. A metal, he's a metal man. So in this, I think they've gone with... Because in, in different versions also, the way that the reason they all get different powers is, mm. is always different. Oh, Sue, you're so shy, that's why you turn invisible or whatever. <laughs> but in this version, I think they're going with everybody got a, like an element. Yes. So fire, wind, earth, water, and metal in this in this case. Yeah, He's sure. metal. And I know he has, in some versions, also got some technopath powers. Yes. But they don't really lean into that side of it. It's just shooting electricity for the yeah. most part and gathering electricity. I'm surprised he didn't gather so much electricity that it was his undoing. Because that's the era for this, isn't it? That's right. There's always a villain taking on too much energy. Mm. The Hulk. Ang yes. the Hulk. That's right. For example. Yes. Indiana Jones. Well, she wanted all the knowledge, but it was too much Too knowledge. much knowledge, that's right. What an era. Mm. Uh, it's not a good ending, is it? That finale. No, Speaking it's... of action scenes. No, that's right. Especially because this came out a year after The Incredibles. Apparently, a lot of the jokes and things and elements that they put in this movie, they had to take out because they're like, well, The Incredibles made fun of that, so now we can't <laughs> no. do it. The Incredibles is still the best Fantastic Four movie. But I love it how they're testing Johnny's powers earlier. And he's like, I can go really hot. I can burn as hot as the sun. And they're like, don't burn as hot as the sun, you fucking idiot. And then at the end, they're like, burn as hot as the sun, Johnny. Kill everybody if you have to. We have to stop this weird metal man. But also what I enjoyed about the scene where he's testing his powers, they're like, you're burning as hot as the sun and you'll destroy everything. You'll set fire to the Earth's atmosphere. That's what they said. But since you're not going to stop, we'll just turn these extinguishers on. Yeah, now right. we've stopped. Just these regular extinguishers. That's what they should have done in Spider-Man 2 when they had the sun. Just right. put some extinguishers regular on Regular extinguishers. It. Wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, so there's jokes in this. Is there? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so Chris Columbus, uh, who was originally making this movie, which we talked about before in the 90s, he pushed for a heavily comedic tone along the lines of Batman 66 mm -hmm. but Tim Story who came on board off the back of Barbershop and some other hit films he persuaded the higher ups to go for a, less of an outright kind of comedic tone he said that would end in disaster so let's walk the line here a little bit of jokes a little bit of dramedy you know what I mean yeah satisfy no one yeah, that's, that's what right. I say yeah. I mean dramedies are it can be would you call this a drama? no but what I'm saying is I think the MCU and some people have accused certain movies and I can't really disagree with it they go too jokey at the wrong points in time sure Oh, right. But uh -huh. I feel with the MCU, more often than not, the jokes land. They get the balance right. Yeah, but they don't really land here. Here's some things. A uh, segment of the show called, uh, not, not all bad. I guess it's not all bad. Okay, <laughs> okay? cool. Stanley has said that Michael Chiklis' is The Thing is his favourite performance in any Marvel film ever. Presumably he said that at the time because obviously there's been things that have happened since which are, I like Chiklis. I think he does a good job. Yeah, but, but also Andy Serkis' Claw obviously would have taken that. That's right. That's his current favourite. <laughs> Here's some, uh, also some <laughs> alternate cast. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Here's some alternate casting though. Hugh Jackman was wanted for Reed 
Richards. I get it. There's also a deleted scene which people may have seen where he actually morphs his face into Wolverine. He's like, do you want me to be more like this, Sue Jackman? Brendan Fraser oh. and George Clooney were considered for Reed Richards. So for the Invisible Woman in this, we had Rachel McAdams, Scarlett Johansson, Elizabeth Banks and Julia Stiles. And for the thing, James Gandolfini. Oh, Sopranos fan. That's right. And David Boreanaz and uh, Tim Robbins and Mel Gibson for Dr. Doom. I think Mel Gibson was having a very public breakdown at the time, but I think he would have really nailed that unhinged Dr. Doom nature. Yes, for sure. Also, do you want to hear about another version of this? Yeah. Specifically, Peyton Reed came on board. Oh, of Ant-Man fame. That's right, of Ant-Man fame. So when Chris Columbus was doing it, he said, I want to use Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan, who were a couple at the time, for Sue and Reed. Huh. But Peyton, that real life chemistry going you on. You know, until he cheated on her a lot and they broke up. That real life chemistry until a bit of divorce. <laughs> Love right, it. Yeah. Mm. And also, he pitched his Fantastic Four movie to Fox as a hard day's night. Okay. Uh, but with superheroes. Ah, oh, so they're all they're famous and screaming, screaming yeah. fans running after them. That's kind of fun. Uh, Alex Denioff as Reed Richards. Oh, from Buffy. That's right. Charlie's Theron as Sue Storm. From um, other movies? Other, yes. <laughs> you couldn't name one? No, I was Mad Max. <laughs> sure. Uh, Paul Walker as Johnny Storm. R.I.P. And John C. Riley as Ben Grimm. Like it. Me too. And of course, as the villainous Doctor Doom, Jude Law. Jude Law. Yeah, from other movies also. Oh, okay. So I don't mind it. I don't mind that casting either. The young Pope. What I don't understand about this, and we'll talk a bit more about it next week when we cover Rise of the Silver Surfer. Fox had the X Men and the Fantastic Four and Daredevil. And they didn't ever think, what if we did something with this together? Like like burned it all? Yeah, like burned it all. <laughs> I do have actually a video where I discuss all the different Fox properties and how they plan to blend all of these together at one point. Yeah, right. But I guess they thought, well, no, let's keep it all separate. Nobody wants to see that. But people I remember exclusively at the time and even as, you know, as early as the 90s wanted to see comic book characters cross over mm. into different, not even universes, just Batman goes, hey, there's Superman. Right. <laughs> you know? I'd watch two hours of that. <laughs> You just keep flying overhead. Yeah. Hey, there's Superman. Oh, he's back. Oh, my goodness. He's quick. Yeah, yeah. right? Makes me really wonder why I do this, because he could solve all the crime. This is a big hit, though. Didn't yeah. get a sequel for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, on an $87 million budget, it made $333 million, and still, to this day, is the highest grossing Fantastic Four movie. If you don't count the Incredibles films. Oh, I do. So there you go. That's Fantastic Four 2005. Come back next week. We're going to be talking about the Silver Surfer. Is it better? I remember it being better. I remember it being better, but yeah. I, we haven't pr we haven't watched it yet, so yeah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. equally bad as this one. That's right. It's also it's not a mistake that we're doing the Fantastic Four. We put polls up on Patreon <laughs> to be <laughs> like, what do you guys want to see? We're doing this on purpose. I know. Not willingly, but on purpose. <laughs> there is methods to our madness, so that's linked below. If you do want to sign up, there's also a bunch of early videos and podcasts and polls for topics and a bunch of things that uh, you can kind of direct the flow of terrible things that we have to talk about. So <laughs> thanks a lot, I guess, for the. Money, but also making us do terrible things. That didn't mean to sound as <laughs> angry as it did. Well, you could take it out, but you're not going to. Absolutely, I'm not. Also, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. Look, trying times at the moment. If you not a lot of uh, new... I mean, there's plenty of comics coming out. Sure. But less, less so movies. They're being cancelled left and right. But a lot are still coming to streaming. Yeah. And so we do the news of the week and then we do a topic. Swing on by if you want to check it out. Come and commiserate with us. Black Widow's not coming out for a lot of months. That's right. Let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about Bloodshot, which is finally on streaming. We already did an episode on it. It was fine, it turns out. I liked I guess. it. I didn't mind yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of movies, felt like they were made in 2000 and bloody five, am I right? <laughs> Got him, that movie. All right, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. See you guys next week. Uh, grab that gem, guys. Uh, see you soon. Uh, subscribe. You know. <laughs> it's too late. They're gone. Yeah, they're gone. They, <laughs> they, they, they stopped listening a while ago. Yeah.